Dr. Austin, thank you so much. Um, my name is Stephanie Jackson, and I've had the privilege of being involved with the DMRF for almost 12 years now. Um, we, like the members of the DMRF, have a son, um, Brian is his name, and we traveled the state of Florida for eight months trying to get an accurate diagnosis. And I'm sure this is very familiar with you that dystonia is, number one, it's very rare, and it is very hard to diagnose, but once we actually got the diagnosis, we thought, well, okay, now, now what's next? And um, the neurologist that we met with, they um, started off on some oral medications. Um, Cinemet was the first one. And Brian stayed on that for six weeks, and it did absolutely nothing to help him whatsoever. And so then we said, okay, we started hearing about Botox injections. So that was our second remedy to try to just put an end to you know, this terrible situation that he was faced with. And so we got the first round of Botox, and I thought, wow, this is great. We can go home, and I can put this dystonia matter behind me. Well, unfortunately, by the time it was when we were going to get the uh, second set of injections, um, we did it, and hardly any benefits came whatsoever. So it was at that point, and uh, Brian was just approaching 17 years old, that we looked at each other, my husband and I, and we said, oh my goodness, it looks like we're gonna to have to have this procedure called deep brain stimulation. And so we did go through with that, and I certainly know that that's an area of expertise that you have, working with families, whether it be with children with dystonia, that are looking at, at what is our last hope to somewhat restore a normal life. So share with me what it's like to, to be in the clinic and to have a mother or a father, someone like me who would come to you, and they're desperate. So what, what, what does it feel like to be in, in the doctor's chair? Well, I'm, I'm really I'm happy to meet you today, and it's wonderful to know that your son is doing so much better. So that's, first of all, just great news. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been wonderful to, to be in the field my, most of my whole career, really, and it's especially rewarding to take care of patients with dystonia. Um, I think, you know, first off, it's very important that people get properly diagnosed and worked up. Um, that dystonia is still pretty unrecognized and awareness overall is still not where it needs to be. Um, so when patients first come to us, that's the first thing that we, we make sure we're, we're dealing with dystonia yes. and they've had the adequate workup mm -hmm. and um, we can try to understand what is causing the dystonia. There's many different causes for dystonia. Um, and, and once all of that uh, important groundwork is done. We can talk about the therapeutics, the options. There's no cure for most forms of dystonia. There's treatment options. And as you pointed out, there's medications, injections, etc. But sometimes the dystonia is so severe that we think about deep brain stimulation. Yeah. Um, and it is a very powerful therapy for the right candidate. And um, under, but the patients and the families need to understand what's involved, the risks and what benefits that they can expect so that they have realistic expectations to right. cure someone. Right. Um, and there is a, a, a time period where you need to um, really work with, with the programmer after the system has been in place mm -hmm. to get the system optimized. Right. And so there's uh, several things to really educate people about, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, it can be a really powerful therapy like you've experienced yes. with your son. I mean, we certainly have. I, I think I shared with you earlier that, you know, when Brian had the operation and then the neurosurgeon said, you know, you're going to need to give it a year. I think that was some very good advice. You know, you don't want the expectations to be so high and then you get disappointed if it doesn't meet that, that level of satisfaction you so desperately want. But certainly in our case, um, it has been life-changing, not just for our son, but for me, it's his mother, my father, um, my husband, his father, and he has one older brother. And so certainly, I think it would be important for a mom like me to, to share our personal story, to let people know there is hope, and to not, not feel like you're trapped in a body where you have to just go on the rest of your life, that there is um, much research going on through the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation, and I think slowly but surely the word is getting out that if you have a child that maybe has an ankle that's twisting, or it could be something as simple as maybe their handwriting doesn't look quite right, that um, I think it's just incumbent upon us to talk about this, to get the word out, and then 
to put our trust in knowledgeable doctors like you. And I know as a mother, it's very gratifying to know that we've got people who have devoted their, their studies, their college careers to going into the field of neurology. And now we have this wonderful procedure called deep brain stimulation. And I know in the number of people that I've met, it has helped virtually everybody. There are some people who may still be in wheelchairs, but they might be able to play wheelchair basketball, where before they were confined in their bedroom and could hardly do anything. So I, I think it's important to, to let people know the expectations. You know, you might need to kind of keep them in check at first, but to certainly send that message that there is hope and to never give up. And everyone is an individual. You can't really know what your outcome might be with a similar therapy until you get worked up and evaluated by experts that do this. They, they're the ones that can best tell you what kind of outcome you might be able to expect to have. Yes. But um, even though DBS has been around for quite a while now, mm -hmm. um, I am excited about what's coming in the future. Yeah. There's, there's newer systems that are coming out mm -hmm. from uh, the various device manufacturers that are going to have um, new features and, and better ways, I think, to to even offer this therapy in the future. So perhaps we'll get better outcomes, the surgery itself will be easier to undergo, yes. and um, getting people optimized will be even better. Yeah. Well, I cannot thank you enough for your time, and again, just from our work with the DMRF and just everything that you're doing in your your office um, and across what's going on across America, um, thank you so much for Thank you too. Your time. We need wonderful uh, allies out there with, with fighting the fight. So there thank you, you very much. Well, thank you.